today's project diary, I will teach you how to grow marigolds from seed. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to grow marigolds from seed. Now you may have heard me talk about this in my previous video of uh, companion edible flowers. Uh, now before making that video, I didn't realise just how controversial this subject can be. Uh, there are quite a few uh, do's and don'ts and uh, some people are arguing about the different varieties that I listed in that video. Now everyone is agreeing that the calendula variety are edible. Uh, now there seems to be two or three others that are, well, quite debatable. Now I've gone back and eaten some of these um, non-edible ones. Basically they're poisonous if you eat quite a lot. Um, so if you eat them as a whole meal, um, it would probably cause some kind of harm to you. But I've gone back and I've tried some of those uh, petals and quite frankly, they're really chemically and, and they're really bitter and I wouldn't want to eat too many of those in the first place. Um, there was another variety that I was told about that I wasn't pr uh, known previous and that doesn't look anything like these or the, the photos that I put in my previous video. They look almost weed-like and uh, I wouldn't eat those anyway. Um, but some of the cooking variety, uh, uh, some of the cooking ideas that I came up with were actually from TV celebrity chefs. So if they're promoting it, then obviously um, there must be some kind of, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to leave that debate there. Please, if you are putting anything new into your diet, do some of your own research. There is a lot of fake information out there uh, on the internet. And obviously I don't want anybody to be harmed by any suggestions that I've made. So please... Um, if you want to, to be 100% safe, uh, make sure you're growing the calendula variety. But anyway, I'm going to go back to today's video and growing all types of marigolds from seed. As usual, I'm using multi-purpose store-bought compost and I'm going to lightly press the soil down before sowing the seeds. Now you can get perennial and annual varieties of marigolds. The perennials will come back every year, but they won't withstand any freezing or cold temperatures. Also, a majority of the annuals should self-seed and come back the next year anyway. Now I'm going to try and make this video as short as possible, so I'll leave a lot more information in the description box below. Also, as usual, I'll leave you some handy Amazon links if you want to purchase any growing materials or seeds online, including these seed trays, propagators and many varieties of marigold seeds. So here they are. Now different varieties will have different shaped seeds. Now a lot of gardeners will put three or four in each pod and then thin out the weaker seedlings later on. But personally, I don't like wasting seeds and I love to give all of my seedlings the best start in life. So I'm just going to place one seed in each pod. Now marigolds will keep blooming all summer long as long as they keep getting some warm weather. So the best time to sow these are indoors if you want an early start or outside as soon as there's no chance of frost. Once you finish sowing all of the seeds, you just want to top them off with a light layer of soil. If you're interested in making this soil scoop and you haven't seen my video, the link should be on the screen now. Then lightly just spread the soil all over the seeds and if you see any big chunks, either break them up or throw them out. The reason why you don't want any chunks is because you want the seedlings to have no resistance when they're trying to push through the soil. Now one of the most popular questions I keep getting asked is watering and it's one of the most difficult to answer, mainly due to the fact that each country and climate and weather conditions are completely different. If your weather's really hot, you at least want to soak these once a day, and in cooler climates, you might be able to get away with every other day. Just make sure the soil's constantly moist and it doesn't dry out or become waterlogged. Then all that's left to do is label these up and leave them in a warm, sunny place. And then just wait. They should start sprouting within a few days, and here they are after a week. Here they are six weeks in and as you can see they're just starting to produce flowers. Now unfortunately we've had some really cold weather at the end of spring here and it's really affected the growth process and the speed that these grow at. Less than half of them have germinated which is really unusual but I will keep watering the whole tray and hope they come on later on when it warms up. So as you can see, the rate of these are growing so uh, so differently. This is mainly due to the weather that we've had. Um, now two weeks ago we had a frost and then since then we've had nothing but forecasts of um, rain and overcast uh, cloud. Uh, but now we've got some of the hottest days of the year. Uh, so I'm just gonna transplant these because I still don't trust the weather report and I wanna keep these in the shed just in case. But as you can see, hardly any of them have germinated due to this cold weather. 
and last year pretty much all of them actually all of them did uh, germinate and bloom so I'm going to try again uh, later on and hopefully do these through the summer but I'm just going to transplant these and show you how to do it and here's how so I'm going to use my regular tool of a teaspoon I'm going to use the handle here because it helps me prise out the seedlings a little bit easier now at this stage the plant is really sturdy so there's no need to be too delicate when transplanting as you can see there's a really nice root system forming on here and I'm just going to place it at the base of the pot then just top it up with regular multi-purpose compost. Now if your weather is good you really don't need to do this step but as we're going to get more rain it can rot the flowers so I'm going to leave them in the shed a bit longer. Now there are so many gardeners that actually hate marigolds but personally I really like them. They're generally an all round beneficial flower to have in your garden mainly because their extremely bright orange colour attracts lots of pollinators. They're one of the main flowers to be used in companion planting because they work alongside many fruits and vegetables such as apricots, beans, cabbages, carrots, celery, apples, broccoli, brussels sprouts, cauliflower, mulberries, lettuce, strawberries, tomatoes and any fruit trees. They also help repel pests such as tomato worms. So I've lightly packed down the soil and I'm just going to give it a good watering. Now at this stage you want to give it a really good soak but later on you can allow it to dry out. Not too much or for too long but this will really help promote a good root system. And there you go, all done. Here they are less than a week later and I'm really glad I left these in the shed because we've had nothing but rain. But fingers crossed we will start getting some good sunshine soon. So now these are blooming and they're a really lovely size. As you can see there's a second flower coming there now and it is absolutely boiling today. We're finally getting some good weather, so hopefully the next few weeks is gonna be nothing but sunshine. So now I'm gonna repot these straight into the garden and show you how to do that now. So if you're gonna place these in your square foot garden, you can space these four per square. But as I've only got three at the moment, this will have to do. Now these will find a happy home between my tomato plants here, but when you're fertilizing your tomatoes, don't fertilize your marigolds. When taking these out of the pot, just give the bottom a little squeeze, turn it upside down and it should come out easily. Once you've done that, then prise the root system out slightly and that will help the grow into the new soil. Once you've done that, roughly dig a hole the same size as the pot. You don't want to bury the root system too deep, just the same height as what it was before. Now if you aren't growing these in a square foot garden and you are just putting them straight into soil, they also work really well if you have clay based soil or sandy. But as I was saying, if you end up putting too much fertiliser on these, you'll promote too much green leaves and not enough flowers. Marigolds also don't need deadheading, but if you're growing the American variety, you can do that and it will promote more flowers to come on later on. If you're also growing the African varieties, you'll find that if you have bad weather, the flowers will die back quicker in rain. There are around 50 different species of marigolds, but they all stem from three different varieties. I will put a full explanation on flower size and height of growth for each different species in the description box below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on planting marigolds from seed. Good luck if you try this at home and I'll see you again next time. Click the subscribe button here if you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases. Here are some links to some of my other videos. You can catch me on any of these social media accounts, including my Facebook gardening group, where thousands of people are sharing photos and gardening ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.